A long while ago on the channel, I made a series of videos called Top 5 Apps of the Month. Now, I tried to do this every month, basically where I would find five really cool apps, I'd share them with you guys in list form, and those were really popular videos at the time. But I got out of the habit of making them for various reasons, so I thought what I'd do today is try to get back in the groove of making these types of videos. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to present you five apps that I've found this month that are all really, really cool and have all various functionality. And hopefully there's one or two on there that you guys will be interested in. So that's what we're going to do today. But before we do, if you'd like, like this video, if you'd like, like this video, I'd really appreciate it. It'd really help the channel. So let's go ahead and jump in. The first app on the list is an application that doesn't have a bunch of utility for me because I'm not very artsy, but if you are the type of person who gets into graphic design at all, Boxy is an awesome application. It has a ton of features. Basically what it allows you to do is create SVG images. You can design logos or web graphics or whatever you want. Basically anything that you would conceive of you can design in this thing kind of like similar to what you'd be able to do into like Inks Inkscape or something like that so Boxy is similar in that vein and you can import other graphics you can import other SVGs you can edit other SVGs if, if they're in certain formats you can do a whole bunch of stuff inside of Boxy I barely scratched the surface in the b-roll that you're seeing now that you're just seeing me kind of play around and you can definitely tell that I'm not an artsy type I'm just putting some text in there that's basically all I'm doing and but you can do a ton more than that there's animation support there's things like you know adding text to a path you can create a uh, you can uh, create a separate path or you can create you know weird paths or whatever you want to do there's just a ton of different stuff that you can do inside of boxy if you're the again the graphic design type of person I am not, like, not at all. So this type of application wouldn't do me much good simply because anything that came out of this would come out looking like, you know, not good. So it's not much for me, but I know a lot of people look towards Inkscape and try to and see it as like a very complicated type of thing. And it is. Boxy's does a lot of stuff that Inkscape can do, but in a more simple user interface, at least from what I found. It, you, there's a lot of discoverable stuff parts of Boxy that are kind of buried in long clicks and stuff on the icons in the toolbars, but that's not too bad. And it does allow it to be simple at first, and then you can kind of delve down into more deeper issue, uh, you know, uh, features and stuff. So that's Boxy. It's really, really cool. If you need to create an SVG image, Boxy is a good option for you. So the next one is kind of also on the long lines of graphic design, but also web design and ricing if you're into ricing window managers or whatever. If you're that type of person who occasionally needs a color code of some kind, but you don't know how to grab that color code, eyedropper is a option for you. Now, there are a ton of color pickers out there, a lot of them. Uh, you know, I used to be a big fan of G-Picker or G-Pick or something like that, and they all work really well. The problem is, is that a lot of them are Xorg only. The way Wayland works doesn't really lend itself to allowing applications like Eyedropper to exist, but Eyedropper works fantastic in Wayland, at least it does in KDE. Basically what Eyedropper will do is you activate the tool, you click on the color that you want to know the code of, and it will tell you the code. Now, it also will tell you a whole bunch of other formats of code. So if you need the RGB hex codes or whatever they are, you can get all these types of different color codes for that particular color. It will also save the history of the colors that you've chosen along the side there. And that's really nice as well. I, d I believe there's like a limit of 10 colors, and then they'll kind of like fade out of the history, which is a shame. I wish I could, I could like have more, but at least there is a history there, which is nice. And other than that, there's not much to it. Now, there are a few customization options, so you can change how the codes, you know, look or whatever. If you are into that type of thing, you can also change which ones are displayed. So if you don't need some of the other ones, you can just kind of make it a more simple tool if you want. That's eyedropper, and honestly, this one is really really cool if you are like if you like if you're trying to make a uh, like a bar in in hyperland or something like that you can use eyedropper to find the colors that you need from a wallpaper or whatever so your bar can match the wallpaper so that's eyedropper the next one on the list is a note taking application called iotis now iotis is a very simple gtk based note taking application it doesn't have a lot of frills so if you're looking for something like Notes Nook or Evernote or Obsidian, this doesn't really compete with those. This is more of a Google Keep style note-taking application. It just take 
Snotes. That's what it does. It does have Nextcloud integration, so you can sync it with Nextcloud, so you can use Nextcloud Notes on your mobile phone, and then have it sync with this on your desktop if you want, which is what I do. And it is just really simple. It supports Markdown really, really well. It has a preview mode, so you can preview your notes so what they'll look like if the Markdown was rendered. You can categorize them into different categories, but it, that's the basic organization tool that it offers. It doesn't offer tags or anything like that. It just categories. That's it. And there's not much more to say about it. It takes really good, simple notes. It synchronizes with Nextcloud and that's it. And I've been on the search for a good, very simple note-taking application. IOTIS is the one that uh, that was recommended to me and it works very, very well. I've actually started moving all of my stuff over out of Google Keep. I believe that this is the one that I'm going to be sticking with at least for a while. It's very, very good. It's IOTAS, I-O-T-A-S. All the links for all these applications will be in the video description as well. So if you find one you want to download, head on down there to the description and it, you can download it there to, just as you pass by the like button. Again, leave that like and I'd be very appreciative. The, the, the next one, <laughs> the, the next one on the list is Plexamp. Now Plexamp has been around for a very long time. It actually is developed by the same guys who do Plex. But basically what it is, is it takes all the stuff out of Plex and just makes it a music player. And while the desktop version that you guys are seeing now is basically just an electron version of the mobile application. So if you get this on your iPhone or your Android, it's going to look and function basically the same. I like it because it just gives me an act, gives me access to my Plex library on the desktop without me having to open it up in the browser. I really do like that. And... Other than that, there's not much to say about it. It is complex and offers you a lot of different options and stuff in terms of look, feel, and functionality. If you go spelunking into the settings or whatever, you'll find that there's a ton of different options for you to do basically anything that you want to do here because it is basically a mobile application, so it's going to give you a lot of options for customization. But other than that, it just plays music. It allows you to create different radio stations just like Plex does. You can rate your, your music here, then that will be transferred over back into Plex if you want to. It does a ton of different stuff, and it's a very good music player if you use Plex. If you use Plex. So that's what I've been using to listen to music on my desktop and on my phone, and it works just really, really well. Now, just a little note there. Don't judge me on my music taste. I have a very eclectic music taste. I range from country to you know, R&B and pop and everything in between. So I like a whole bunch of stuff. So don't judge me too harshly on what you saw on the screen there. I, I like everything. So anyways, that is Plexant. The last one on the list is very niche. <laughs> and I would su probably suggest that the vast majority of you are never going to download this app, but I found a use for it and I thought I'd share it with you guys. So this is called Sigil, S-I-G-I-L. And basically what this does is it allows you to edit the metadata for EPUB files. Now, it may do other things, and I'm sure it probably does, but at the base level, what I use it for is it allows me to open up an EPUB file, not to read it, but to edit the metadata, and I can go through and actually put in a couple lines of XML code inside of that EPUB file that allows it to then have that metadata attached to it. So what I've been using it for is adding series data to EPUB files because I've been using Kavita, which is a self-hosted ebook uh, e platform. And that thing assumes that everything is part of a series. Unfortunately, that's not true. Not every EPUB has series data. So in order for Kavita to actually work well with it, it has to have that series metadata. So I use Sigil to go in and put the series metadata into the file, I save it, and then Kavita can you know read it properly. That's basically what I've been using S Sigil for. Now, like I said, I'm assuming that there's more stuff to it. If there's other things, if there are other things that you need to do with an EPUB file that you might need to edit those things for, you can use Sigil to do that. I will say, and this is just me being completely honest with you guys, it doesn't work great in GNOME. It, it jumps all around it, you really do want to make sure that you're saving every time you leave the applications and when i mean every time you leave the application every time you move focus away from the application sometimes it will lose your you know data now it doesn't do that so much on kde because i believe this is a qt application i believe it's a really old qt application but it seems to work better in uh in kde land than it did in GNOME. just gonna point that out there it doesn't mean that it doesn't work in GNOME. It did fine. It just had some quirks. Anyways, that's Sigil. 
And it's, like I said, very, very niche. So those are your top five Linux applications for July 2024. If you have suggestions for other apps that I could put on future iterations of this li list, make sure you drop those in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast, just like all of these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing without you. The channel would not be anywhere near where it is right now, so thank you so very, very much for your support. You can also head on over to the store if you want to support me in another way. That's available at shop.thelinuxcast.org. There you'll find all sorts of awesome merch, including hats, t-shirts, and all sorts of stuff. That's shop.thelinuxcast.org. And uh, thanks to everybody who has supported me everywhere you support me. I truly do appreciate it. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.